I was regularly asked how I prepare my panels for my paintings. So time to make a new video with the subject how to make an artist panel with MDF and gesso. Let's get started. I use wooden MDF panels of 8mm thick. You also have these in thinner and thicker variants, but I think 8mm is ideal. I start by sanding the panel lightly with 60 grit sanding paper. As a result, the wax layer on the wooden panel disappears and the gesso adheres well to the MDF panel. I remove the dust with a clean cloth. I apply the gesso undiluted with a soft brush. If you would use a stiffer brush, the gesso gets too little chance to flow out and you create stripes on the surface. But if you like that, by all means, use a stiffer brush. I paint very detailed and it's therefore in my interest to have a sufficiently smooth surface. I always mount my paintings in a floating frame, so that the sides of the painting also remains visible. So don't forget to paint the sides as well. Every artist cannot live without a hair dryer, and neither can I. By drying the applied gesso as quickly as possible, the fibers in the MDF panel do not have a chance to swell. Now that the panel is dry, I sand it with a 180 grit sanding paper. I remove the dust with a clean cloth. After this, I apply the second layer of gesso undiluted. I use gesso because that's a water-based primer. I always paint the underpainting of my paintings in acrylics. Of course, then you cannot use a primer that is all based. It's important that you paint parallel to the panel. When there are still paint strokes visible at the end, they follow the direction of the panel nicely. Diagonal stripes on the background come across as very restless and you absolutely don't want that. Again, the idea is to let the gesso dry quickly. Now that the panel is dry, I sand it with 180 grit sanding paper. I remove the dust with a clean cloth and up to the next step. Now that the MDF panel is already well saturated with gesso, I can apply the third layer a little more diluted with water. In this way the gesso flows better and you get a nicer end result. Again, it's important to follow the direction of the panel with your brush. The gesso I use is Talons, which is a Dutch brand. By now you already know it, let the gesso dry quickly. Now that the panel is dry, I sand it with 400 grit wet sanding paper. I put a very small amount of water on the sanding paper and certainly not excessively on the panel. This is a wooden panel that can absorb the moisture like a sponge, so be careful with water. 
a little goes a long way. I remove the dust with a clean cloth. The panel is really starting to get smooth by now. I also apply the fourth layer of gesso, slightly diluted, so that it can flow nicely. The number of layers of gesso may seem a bit overdone, but you get a nicer end result when you apply a number of thinner layers as opposed to one thick layer of gesso. Gesso is available in white, but there is also black and transparent gesso. Again, let the gesso dry quickly. Now that the panel is dry, I sand it with 400 grit wet sanding paper. I remove the dust with a clean cloth. The fifth layer of gesso is the last layer and I give it a color. It just paints better if you have a neutral shade on your panel versus white. That way you can go lighter or darker than your background during the underpainting. You choose the color yourself but since there will be some greenish tones in the painting, I choose this color, which is a mixture of ivory black and turquoise green acrylics. I paint the back of the panel with a layer of black acrylic lacquer so that side is also protected against moisture among other things. Again, let the gesso dry quickly. Now that the panel is dry, I sand it with 400 grit wet sanding paper. After many hours work and some magic, you get this as a result. I hope you learned a little more about how to make an artist panel from MDF. I look forward to see you in the next one.